Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Amen. I noticed that there's a, a movie that's been on. I've no, noticed looking at what's on TV a couple times. I've seen it, and it was a very popular movie when it first came out. And that's the movie Home Alone. Um, I don't know, I would think maybe most of you have seen that movie. And uh, back when it first came out, people were really raving about how good it was. I'd have to admit that when I went to see it, I was somewhat disappointed. You know, I love slapstick humor, so there are parts of it that are very funny. But uh, the beginning of the movie, to me, was rather disturbing. It showed a very dysfunctional family, a family that wasn't at all kind to each other. And the main one that uh, sort of had a life that was made miserable by the family was Kevin, the boy. You know, his brother constantly tormented him and uh, hit him and just abused him. Uh, his uncle called him names. His parents, well, they pretty much ignored him unless they uh, would discipline him for something he didn't even do. But I uh, don't think of Kevin as some innocent little child either. He was quite the spoiled brat. Truth of the matter was they, that Hollywood here showed a very dysfunctional family. Well, some might say that Hollywood was depicting an accurate picture of many, many families in our society today. There are many families where kindness is not really displayed very openly. And it seems like spouses are at war, parents and children are at war, siblings are at war, and it goes on and on. Many dysfunctional families who don't really pay much attention to the fruit of the Spirit that's mentioned today, that being kindness. If our home is sort of dysfunctional right now, or if it has been, or if it will be, we need to pay special attention to God's fruit given to us by the Holy Spirit and make better use of that fruit, display that fruit more openly, and that's the fruit of kindness. After all, even if our family right now is peace, everything's great, recognize the temptation to not be kind. Face many such temptations. The birth of our Savior can serve as a good reminder of God's kindness to us and a good motivator of our kindness to others. So let's now remember to prepare or be prepared for Christ's coming with kindness. Christmas does give us a good picture of God's kindness. But before we focus on kindness, let's think about the other aspect that God displays too, and that is justice. Too many only want to think that God is kind, and his kindness for us should be emphasized, but don't forget about his justice. If we only thought of God as being kind, then we might be tempted to think, I'll get away with whatever sin I'm going to commit. God won't do anything about it. But God will do something about sin. He will see to it that uh, people face punishment because of sin. Now, for the believers, that punishment wasn't faced by them, but was faced by Jesus on the cross. He paid for our sins. 
The unbeliever, while they'll face punishment for their sins, and it will lead to them, if they remain in unbelief, it will remain with them as they enter the gates of hell. Demand for justice is really why Jesus came to earth. Death and damnation hangs over the head of all people. From the time of Adam and Eve's first sin until the last sin that will be committed right before Jesus returns on Judgment Day. God promised to punish sin and he wouldn't and couldn't go back on his word. He promised that death, earthly and eternal, would be the result of sin if something wasn't done about that sin. Christmas was his way of keeping his word and at the same time showing kindness. The plan was for the child born in the manger at Bethlehem to take our sin upon himself as he hung on the cross and paid for each and every sin that we have, are, and will commit. As believers, those sins are forgiven. The only stipulation placed upon his plan started on the first Christmas was that to benefit from what the Savior would do, people have to believe in Jesus as their Savior. His being kind doesn't mean that he's just going to overlook the sin of the world. He would, out of kindness, forgive all who trusted that the child in the manger was their Savior, was the payment made for their sin. Without possessing such a faith, God will justly send unbelievers to hell. This danger makes it necessary for us to remember both God's kindness and God's justice. You know, uh, Paul said in writing to the Romans, consider the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you will be cut off. God's kindness extends to the ungrateful and wicked as he gives them the chance to have their sins forgiven. But his kindness has limits, limits which are crossed through continuing unbelief. Even though we can't overlook his justice, we believers can be grateful for his kindness. In scripture, we're told on more than one occasion that God's kindness is unfailing. It is unfailing because of what Christmas started. The plan was to make it possible for each and every person to have their sins forgiven. 33 years after Christmas, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, those were really the conclusion of the plan. Jesus paid for the sin of the world. Jesus rose from the dead to secure the victory for all who believe. God's kindness was displayed by God the Father's willingness to give his one and only Son as payment for our sin. God's kindness was displayed by God the Son's willingness to be the world's Savior, to suffer and die for our sins. God's kindness was displayed to us very clearly through the life of Jesus Christ and throughout the pages of Scripture. God's kindness centered in the gift of his Son. And this is clear. We know that 
Jesus was, our kind, loving Savior who paid for what we couldn't pay for. What isn't always clear is our response to God's kindness. We don't always display the gratitude to God for all the kindness he displayed by then being kind to others. You know, the holiday of Thanksgiving reminds us to be thankful for the material blessings we have. Now the holiday of Christmas reminds us to be thankful for the spiritual blessings that we have as a result of the birth of God the Son. We can all remember special acts of kindness which people have shown to us, and we quite possibly, at the holiday season, send them a card or give them a gift as gratitude for their acts of kindness. Well, God's kindness is clear. Worship him, and if possible, give him an extra gift of your time, your talents, your treasure. His kindness deserves a special response from us undeserving sinners. And besides showing gratitude to God, his kindness will lead us to be kind to others. And thinking of that first Christmas, we can see some displays of a lack of kindness. Here's a couple. She's expecting a child at any time. It's with her husband from out of town. They get to the city of Bethlehem, and no one seems to be willing to give them a place to stay, to stay where she can have the baby. People of Bethlehem don't seem to have been very kind. Well, finally, a guy says, yeah, you can stay out in the stable or the, you know, with the animals or whatever. They weren't very kind. But don't be too quick to judge them. You know, maybe we think, well, if we were there, we would have opened up our house and even given our bed to Mary to have the baby Jesus Uh, We maybe would have done that now since we know who that baby really was, but the people in Bethlehem, they didn't know. Maybe a majority of them didn't even know there was a a couple wandering around town looking for a place to stay and give birth to their child. You know, Luther made a statement. He said, uh, if I had only been there, how quickly would I have been, how quick I would have been to help the baby. I would have washed his diapers. How happy I would have been to go with the shepherds to see the Lord living in the manger. Well, we can say that or think that now, but if we were back and living at that time in the city of Bethlehem, we would have probably acted the same way that the other people acted. You know, we need to make sure that we aren't being just as unkind as the people of Bethlehem or as unkind as people were throughout Jesus' 33 years of life on earth. We need to make sure that we display kindness to others. Let God's kindness to us motivate us to display this kindness, not just at Christmas, but always. Are there people you know, on our street or elsewhere in the city that could benefit from acts of kindness on our part? We don't need to uh, snoop into other people's business, but we also shouldn't close our eyes and ears when needs exist for people around us. You know, is there an elderly person that could use help with uh, decorating or shopping or cleaning their house, raking leaves off their yard? Is there a lonely neighbor who would appreciate a friendly hello and maybe a friendly visit? Is there a fellow worker at the place where we earn our living who could uh, use a helping hand? 
Are there classmates who could use uh, someone to speak up and defend them instead of making fun of them and ridiculing them? You know, look around. We are told to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Be kind before it's too late. You know, cakes make for very good desserts. But if you leave a piece of cake out uh, for a while, it's going to get hard. It's not going to be all that good. Sort of the same with uh, being act or showing acts of kindness. If we just say, well, maybe tomorrow or maybe next week we'll get around to helping out someone and uh, it might be too late by the time we get around to doing it. And don't just look outside our homes to display kindness. Think of in our homes. Everybody has uh, work to do to keep that home uh, running smoothly, efficiently. Are we doing our share? You know, that's display of kindness by doing our share. But if we really want to be kind... Do more than our share. Help out, you know, the, the spouse, the, the son, the daughter, the mother, the father. Help them out. Do more than just a fair share. Show your kindness. Christmas is a good time to strengthen bonds of kindness in a Christian home. But also think about your church home. You display the kind of kindness to others who are sitting with you in the chairs here for worship. Do you know you hear so often people say, "Oh, I visited this uh, church and it was just nobody said anything to me." Um, I think those people will come back if they're visitors. Unlikely. Go out of your way to show kindness and concern for those who are part of your Christian family or for the visitors that come in and join us for worship. If people were to describe you, would they say that you are kind? The ability to display kindness is one of the most important characteristics that any Christian can have. Our desire is to share the news of the birth, life, death, and resurrection of our Savior. How willingly are people going to listen to us if we aren't displaying kindness to them and to others? May this Christmas season bring out this fruit of the faith to its fullest. And may we then remind ourselves of God's kindness to us and remain kind until the day we leave this earth and share eternity with God in heaven. All of our obituaries should have a statement in them that other people would include, and that statement being that this person was one of the kindest people people that you could ever know. So may God grant that we be prepared for his coming with kindness. Amen. And please rise. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep our hearts and our minds through faith. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Now join in confessing our faith according to the